never been clearer. Hi guys, welcome back to Hobby Vault. My name is Skylar. Let's get right into the video. So, if you guys are here today, you've probably watched my previous video about the grades on the Gundams that I posted. Today, we are going to continue my beginner Gunpla introduction. I am so sorry to those of you that are here from my community who are a little bit more advanced, but but it is important that we bring more people into the hobby. So hopefully, hopefully you are brand new to Gunpla and I am here to tell you what you need if you're going to pick up a kit today. And then of course, if you go ahead and subscribe or join my Instagram community right here full of all these amazing, awesome people. A couple of you are them, so welcome. Anyways, if you are brand new to Gunpla, I am so excited to welcome you into this amazing world. I am going to talk today about what you need if you're gonna pick up a Gunpla. Kit. Some people get very intimidated by the prospect of, you know, these tiny little pieces on these runners and they're crazy and you don't know what to do with them and you're not sure how to get them off and everything like that. Well, I am here to clear that air for you. We are basically going to go over the basic things you need to start building your kit. So let's get into the list. Let it be noted that you don't need a whole bunch of fancy tools and everything like that. You can get started so simply and then from there you can grow from there but you can have plenty of fun with bare bone minimum tools and we'll see where the journey takes you, hopefully into a full blown addiction. Maybe not an addiction, not an addiction, a full blown obsession. How about that? I'm legit so excited. So excited about Gunpla that I hope it doesn't come off as crazy. So again, if you are brand new and you don't know my personality, I am so sorry for being a little bit too excited over plastic. You have procured a kit, you have gone to the hobby store, you've gotten it from USA Gundam Store, you've gotten it from Amazon, you've gotten it from any number of places. You chose an MG because you're smart and you're cultured. What are you gonna need? What are you gonna need to start? Or maybe you haven't even bought a kit because you're just not even sure where to start. Kind of intimidating when you've never built a kit before. So, what tools do you need? I'm about to tell you. The tools that you're gonna need to use are very minimal. You don't need to have too many tools to get started. What you do need more tools for is if you wanna refine your build, you want them to look a little sharper, a little nicer, customization. I will go over that in future videos. So if you want to go ahead and subscribe, you'll be ready when I post those. First thing that you absolutely have to have are your good old handy nippers. Now, I do have a video reviewing, old reliable here, my favorite set of nippers I've had for very many years that have never broken. I have built hundreds of kits and they have not broken and they have a clean cutoff. So I highly suggest these. I will leave a link in the description or you can watch the video, decide for yourself. Everyone's preference is different. I just bought these just to have a grunt pair, if that makes sense, a pair to handle things that are a little bit less important. So did you see all the dust on that? What the heck? You can tell these are my favorite. Anyway, number one, tool number one is side nippers can't do without it. Now, the next thing is going to come down to how you want to decide to do more advanced nub removal. Let's say you're not going directly to the Gundam, which is a conversation for another day. Let's assume you want to do a little bit more advanced nub removal, right? Good old reliable exacto knife. Now, it does not matter which blade you get. For all intentions purposes, you are a brand new builder. So most hobby kits and most exacto knives are going to have a blade that looks like this. Again, this is all gonna come down to preference, but you're not gonna know your preference until you start building kits. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say any regular old X-Acto knife, probably not pink <laughs> because you probably don't like pink, but any good old X-Acto knife with a blade exactly like this is a good place to start and something I highly suggest. So right now, our countdown is side nippers, X-Acto knife. Honestly, at the end of the day, if you just wanna snap build something for fun or casualness, that's all you need. But if you wanna go again further into more advanced nub removal, I highly suggest, and again, depends on preference, some, some sort of file, some sort of file. The files will actually come in these little starter hobby kits that come with a side nipper and stuff like that. If you're going, in, if you're going into your hobby store and you wanna figure out what you wanna use, some of those little, I think Mr. Hobby. Mr. Hobby creates a starter kit that literally has a set of nippers, files, um, I don't think it has sanding paper, but it has nippers and files and an X-Acto knife. So that right there should tell you what you need to start. But anyways, file and a set 
of multi-grit sandpaper, right? Because when you look at the grit, especially if you're not very versed in, in sandpaper, most people aren't, unless they've had like physical labor jobs, just go ahead and get a kit and then it'll have, this one in particular has 320, 400, 600, 1000, 2400, 6000, and 12,000. Now, the higher you go, the finer the sandpaper is gonna be. So, that's a good rule of thumb. Remember that if you're sitting there in your hobby store and you only have like a, let's assume you only have like a 400 and you see like a 6,000, I would try to go with probably the 6,000, right? So, cause you can spend a little bit more time and you won't scratch up your kit. Very, very, very important. Now, that's basically it. Basically, all you really need to just build a kit and even advanced nub removal would be these technical four things, right? And really, you can just do with these. Now, let's get into the more official, not necessary, but probably will be something that you will purchase in the future, especially if you build more than just a casual Gundam. Good old hobby mat. This one, this brand, it doesn't exist anymore. So that really sucks because I really like these, but I will put one that will replace them in the description. They're good for when you get to customizations and everything like that. Um, when you're playing with plot plate, again, something we will go over in the future because I just don't have enough time to get all of that in one single video. But anyways, hobby mat, not necessary, but it's kind of like a badge of honor of all gunpla builders to have a hobby mat. So eh. next is something that I fell victim to when I first started building. I was so excited to actually see a Gundam inside of a store that I bought most things that were Gundam. So I ended up with a whole bunch of Gundam markers, right? So these bad boys are gonna be for panel lining. Now, a lot of people wanna jump to the black, but if you're looking at a white suit, I tend to prefer the gray Gundam markers and ultra fine if I can help it. There are alternate ways that you can go ahead and panel line with other kind of paints, but just for beginner purposes, here you go. They have entire kits. This is for the seed kits, as you can see here. They will be the colors that are actually used in the seed kits and they will be true to the actual color scheme. Good old panel liners. Don't think they're necessary for people who are just starting out. You do intend on wanting to paint in the future, these are not bad practice. Like you can go ahead and get these and start panel lining. Less is more <laughs> when you panel line. I can't tell you how many people are brand new and they're like, this is so fun. And it gets too dark and it looks ridiculous and it ruins the kit. Ruins the kit. Some people like that look, but when I'm looking in terms of the aesthetic of a suit, I don't want it to be just a bunch of black outline lines. So yes, markers, not necessary, but they are fun. Now, another thing that is highly unnecessary is plastic polish. Now they do make finishing cloths as well, but basically if you just want something to look a little nicer, a little richer, especially if it's an MG, the MG wing that I did literally I used the entire thing because I didn't want to paint the kit because I loved it so much. It is kind of neat. It does give a really, really, really shiny polish to a suit. Next thing that we're gonna talk about is going to be Mark Fit. Now, if you are doing an MG like I previously was showing, you probably will have water slide decals, right? So if you've ever put a decal on anything, you know that a general rule of thumb is you put like Windex or water, you put the decal on and then you slide the water out basically the same kind of concept with mark fit you're going to put this on the spot where you want to put the water slide decal you put some water on your decal and you put it over the mark fit and you are going to be able to move that water slide decal until you find the exact perfect location for it so it allows you a little bit of leeway it is a good pickup and honestly the tamiya one is one of my favorites so Link in the description as well. And finally, let's assume you put a kit together and you've decided you're not gonna paint it, not gonna do anything crazy, but you notice that the parts are falling off, which is very common with Gundam, something we will go over in the future. Parts will fall off, so I highly suggest Tamiya cement. Now this is extra thin. I'm not a big fan of using a lot of cement when I put my pieces together. When I customize my kits, I, I do use the better one, but this is the ultra thin and you can go ahead and put it on your parts and keep them from falling off and you are good to go. And I think that's pretty much it. That is all you need, that is the extras that you need 
before getting into the crazy customization world, the crazy airbrushing, the crazy everything. So I hope this list was helpful and that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please remember to join my Instagram community. That is where I am most active. I have a whole bunch of people who are super helpful, super awesome. They will help you and I will help you with any questions that you have. Leave any of your questions in the comment section. I cannot wait to make more content for you. Again, thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. My thoughts have never been clearer. What you doing to me now? Let me know if you guys want to see a Twitch stream because I'm thinking about streaming. What do you think? I'm super awkward in case you didn't notice. <laughs> Alright, bye guys.